Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. With the end of construction, begin setting up the greenhouse functions. Unfortunately, the list of projects is longer than can be completed during the remaining months of the winter rain season. So I really need to prioritize what needs to be done before spring versus what can wait until after spring. The list of projects is long and includes arranging the sitting area, laying out the food garden beds, installing irrigation, final adjustments to the pool and pond liners, installing the water circulation system, filling the pool and ponds from the rainwater tanks, setting up the potting bench and seed tray area, preparing the ornamental beds, and, oh, planting a peach tree that arrived a couple months early. So if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe so it can reach more viewers, and come along as today I start first things first. Finishing the pool and pond liners is a top priority. The rocks collected here are for pool and pond, but this is a part of the food garden, so everything else needs to move out. Six to eight inches of soil brought in before planting. Everything needs to move out of this side to form the raised beds and lay the irrigation and then bring in loads of soil. The potting bench is functional, so any finishing work like drawer handles is a low priority. The planting areas on the east end are for herbs and ornamentals, which are the lowest priority for planting. So for now, I'll just fill this area to cover the hard pan. It took a while, but all 80 crystals were washed and reattached to the chandelier. The fixture is positioned over the middle of what will be the sitting area. In the meantime, the light lets me continue working after dark on these short winter days. Hugel culture is a method of building raised beds with layers of rotted logs and sticks, compost, and other organic material that worked well in my outdoor garden. I've read that it can work in a greenhouse and I have plenty of rotted wood on my property. So I'm going to experiment with some beds as hugel culture and some as standard composition. I alternate between hauling chips that are easy to load, but have to be pulled uphill from the west side parking area with hauling rocks that are harder to load into the cart, but then easily roll down the wheelchair ramp. For now, I'm just bringing in loads of rocks and placing them around the edge to estimate how many loads I'll need, which is about 10 to 15 more loads. This is after a few days of hauling rocks and chips. Moving the rocks and mulch requires walking in the basin, so it's best done before they're filled with water. Filling the pool and ponds will take almost 14,000 gallons, but my rainwater tanks are only 5,000 gallons, that means before the end of the rainy season, I'll need almost three full tank cycles, plus another refill to go into the dry summer months with full tanks for the greenhouse irrigation. Before filling with water, the liner needs to be smoothed along the bottom and sides by lifting over the edge, held in place by rocks, trimmed on the garden side, and mulched all around. It's very heavy material, so this is what it looks like working off and on by myself for a few days. This peach tree will be planted in the ground, but was supposed to arrive in January. I selected a Sam Houston cultivar developed by Texas A&M for its low chill hour requirement. It came bare root in early November, way before I have the time, energy, or money to prepare the entire corner where it will be planted. First, I need to get all this stuff out of the way. The 
The solution is to make a raised bed frame out of scrap cedar and untreated lumber that is large enough to protect the tree's roots for as long as needed, but small enough that it can be filled with a few bags of soil. I'll unscrew the pieces and remove the frame when I bring in the loads of dirt to fill all the garden beds. The frame doesn't need to be actually level, just kind of level, so long as the top of the frame is above the new soil level. Rainwater is now seeping under the door and walls where the greenhouse is lower than the outside grade. Also, condensation is dripping from the gutters. Time to start watching for mold. I don't have a coat rack inside the house yet, so this one's working for now. And there you have it, preparing my dish for Thanksgiving at my sister's, who lives a couple miles away on this island. I'm grateful to have a kitchen for the first time in five years, to be able to bake at home rather than taking grab-and-go from the store. I'm also immensely grateful to all the people who helped turn my dream into a reality, especially Matt. So enjoy past episodes to see these folks in action and come back next time when work continues on the top priority projects. Mm -hmm.